According to the Centers for Disease Control, alcohol contributes to roughly 28% of all driving fatalities. In 2016, over 10,000 Americans were killed in accidents where alcohol was a contributing factor. In 1972, the figure was even higher, with over 25,000 Americans killed in alcohol-related auto accidents. Ample proof, as if more were needed, that the bottle and the steering wheel simply do not mix. Sadly, in many instances, the intoxicated driver escapes the cold chill of death, while passengers and bystanders often fall victim to his or her poor judgment. Such was the case in Beckley, West Virginia on July 23, 1972, when an innocent young man was abruptly robbed of not only his life, but his very identity. Summer in Raleigh County, West Virginia, can be a truly enjoyable time. The higher elevation combined with the generally lower humidity make it an ideal locale for outdoor activities. Couple this with the many rivers, lakes, and parks, and you have a nearly magical combination for those seeking an escape from the daily grind of life. As the sun begins to set, the experience can become absolutely surreal. The hills and valleys are bathed in a soft orange hue, and the temptation to get out of the house for a relaxing drive or a friendly gathering is almost overwhelming. It is not uncommon to find numerous groups of family and friends gathered around a bonfire and enjoying the absolute best of what West Virginia has to offer. Sadly, the urge which brings much of the populace out to enjoy such idyllic conditions is often accompanied by the temptations of the bottle. All too often, this natural indulgence can turn a tranquil evening of outdoor enjoyment into tragedy. Sunday, July 23, 1972, was typical for the town of Beckley. School was out, and it's likely that many groups of local residents, as well as tourists, were out and about, taking advantage of another gorgeous evening. At least one of them, Shady Spring resident William Webster Rutledge, opted to celebrate the evening in a far less glamorous manner, drinking. By 8 p.m., Rutledge was legally intoxicated and began driving south on U.S. Route 19. At the same time, an unsuspecting man was walking south along the same stretch of road, indulging in another activity that was not uncommon for the time hitchhiking. As Rutledge and this man reached the site of the former Fair Deal market, the two would meet for the first and only time. As Rutledge approached the hitchhiker, he lost control of his vehicle and veered to the right. The front end of his speeding automobile struck the man full force, knocking him sideways and over a small embankment. Rutledge's vehicle continued on for another 300 feet, finally coming to rest against a parked car owned by Chester Seaman of Beckley. Rutledge himself sustained only minor facial abrasions in the crash. The southbound hitchhiker was not so fortunate. Police and medical personnel quickly responded to the scene of the accident. The unknown man's body was badly mangled. Paramedics transported him to the Beckley Appalachian Regional Hospital. He was declared dead upon arrival. State police soon found themselves facing a doubly tragic situation. The deceased man was said to have been carrying no identification, and it was quickly ascertained that he was not a local resident. Authorities had only the man's physical and clothing description to go on. It was estimated that the hitchhiker was between 18 and 20 years of age, 
stood six feet tall and weighed 160 pounds. He had a medium build, a small mustache, and dark reddish-brown wavy hair. When found, the man was dressed in black Levi brand slacks, a blue and gray checkered shirt, and what was originally described as a pair of black jungle boots. The man's description was distributed to local newspapers, radio, and television stations, but no identification was forthcoming. The media coverage did, however, catch the attention of another motorist who was able to shed at least some light on the situation. The motorist advised police that he had picked up the young man earlier in the afternoon of July 23rd in the small town of Sutton, about 80 miles to the north. The young man stated at the time that he was headed from Chicago to Bluefield, West Virginia. He further stated that he had been born in Bluefield, but spent the majority of his life in Chicago. The motorist also remembered the man stating that both of his parents were now deceased and that he was traveling to Bluefield in order to obtain a copy of his birth certificate so that he could join the army. The motorist noted nothing unusual or singular about the man, although throughout the 80-mile trek he never did state his name. Sutton, West Virginia is located here, roughly 80 miles north of the location where the accident occurred. Then, as now, U.S. Route 19 serves as a direct conduit between Sutton and Beckley and is a route frequently traveled by tourists and vacationers during the summer months. Today, the trip can be made in just under 90 minutes. However, in 1972, the New River Gorge Bridge had not yet been constructed and the trek could take as long as two to two and a half hours. The motorist advised authorities that he dropped the young man off at Rural Acres Drive along what was then the U.S. Route 1921 bypass. Rural Acres Drive is located here, approximately one quarter mile north of the accident scene. The accident scene itself is located approximately here very near to what was the Fair Deal Market at 340 North Eisenhower Drive, near the intersection with Wilkes Road and Hedrick Street. It is not known if the man was seen by any other drivers or residents prior to his death. Trooper V.A. Vaughn with the West Virginia State Police assembled the meager information available on the John Doe, including post-mortem photos and fingerprints, and transmitted it both to the FBI as well as law enforcement agencies in Chicago. Sadly, no further leads were developed. With the investigation at a standstill, authorities released an additional piece of information on August 20th in the hopes of jarring some memories. State police made it public that the black jungle boots worn by the John Doe displayed more than just a dull shine. It was revealed that the name John Durfee was stenciled on the boots. A check of this name in Chicago, Bluefield, and the FBI's database returned no hits. To this day, it is unknown what, if any, significance the name may hold. Inevitably, the media coverage concerning this John Doe slowly waned. For several months, the man's remains were kept in a drawer at the Rose and Quisenberry Funeral Home. The tragic nature of the man's death struck an emotional chord with owner Amos Quisenberry. He felt certain that somewhere, someone must be looking for the young man. To that end, when the time came to have the remains buried, Quisenberry opted to place the man's body in a tightly sealed metal container which was then placed inside of a standard casket. Quisenberry hoped that this would help aid in preservation and help with any future identification. Shortly thereafter, the John Doe was buried on a ridge at the Tom Lilly Cemetery in Ghent. A simple metal marker with the words, Unknown, died July 23, 1972, was placed upon the Doe's final resting place. William Webster Rutledge was charged with negligent homicide, driving while intoxicated, 
driving on a revoked license, and making fraudulent statements on the application for his license. In December of 1973, he was convicted of the negligent homicide charge and sentenced to a 12-month suspended sentence, placed on two years probation and fined $500. In a morbidly ironic twist, the John Doe was not the only one in Beckley killed in a vehicular accident on July 23, 1972. Earlier in the day, four-year-old Christy Yvonne Motley was killed while playing in a park along Scott Avenue. Motley and three other children were struck by a speeding vehicle driven by a 17-year-old Irvington, New York girl. The driver, who fled the scene immediately after the accident, was later arrested at a local hospital where she was being treated. She, too, was charged with negligent homicide. All told, nine persons were killed that weekend in vehicular accidents around the state of West Virginia. In 2018, the information concerning the John Doe was entered into the NamUs system, as well as the Doe Network According to the Doe Network's website, the unknown man's DNA and fingerprints are available for comparison. However, the public NamUs site makes no mention of either DNA or fingerprints. A thorough check of births in the Bluefield, West Virginia area was made. However, no matches for the John Doe could be found. Now, if the age estimation is correct and the man's claims to have been born in Bluefield are accurate, then it is likely that his date of birth falls somewhere between the years 1950 and 1954. It is also highly likely that the solution to this mystery lies somewhere between Chicago and Bluefield. During the 1950s, industrial cities like Chicago, Detroit, and Cleveland were common destinations for recently unemployed West Virginians, and they often migrated in groups. Perhaps one of our viewers in these areas can help to connect the many dots. Please pay close attention to the following summation. The John Doe was killed after being struck by an intoxicated driver at approximately 8 p.m. on July 23, 1972. He was struck while hitchhiking along the southbound lanes of what was then the U.S. Route 1921 bypass, today U.S. Route 19 or North Eisenhower Drive. The incident occurred in the vicinity of the Fair Deal Market, just south of the intersection with Wilkes Road and Hedrick Street. At the time of his death, the man was wearing a black pair of Levi slacks, a blue and gray shirt with a checkered pattern, and a pair of black military-style jungle boots. The name John Durfee was stenciled on the boots. The John Doe stood six feet tall, weighed 160 pounds, had dark, reddish-brown, wavy hair, and a small mustache. No tattoos or other distinctive markings were observed. He was estimated to have been between 18 and 20 years of age. Earlier in the day, the man had been driven south from Sutton, West Virginia, and was dropped off at Rural Acres Drive, about a quarter mile north of the location where he was killed. The man reportedly stated that he was born in Bluefield, West Virginia, but spent nearly all of his life in Chicago, Illinois. He stated that he was on his way back to Bluefield to obtain a copy of his birth certificate so that he could join the Army. The man also stated that both of his parents were deceased. He reportedly never mentioned either his first or last name. If the origin of his trek was Chicago, it is not known for certain just how he got from Chicago to Sutton, West Virginia, where he was picked up. It's possible that he may have hitchhiked most of the way, or perhaps traveled part of the way by bus or train. Authorities would be very interested in speaking with anyone who may have come in contact with the John Doe at any point between Chicago and Sutton, or who may have known him or his family if and when they resided in the Chicago area. 
It was very common for migrating West Virginians to settle in groups, so it is very possible that they may have resided in close proximity to other former residents of the Mountain State. If you have any information concerning the identity of this John Doe, please contact Trooper Mark Painter with the West Virginia State Police at 304-872-0800. Thank you.